And welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you somebody that I had the honor of hosting on a recent webinar with Multifamily Insiders. If you get a chance, make sure you go back and find Kara. Oops, I let the cat out of the bag. Guys, y'all give it up for Kara Rawson. Can you hear him clapping for you, Kara? Thank you so much. <laughs> oh my gosh, you got quite the fan club. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, Kara, thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. I want to give you a chance to um, share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I, like you said, I'm Kara Rawson. I work for Goldrich Kest um, in the multifamily industry. I've been in the industry since uh, 1997. Um, one of those people that started in leasing and, you know, got the opportunity to work my way up over <laughs> lots and lots of years. Um, in 2017, I left the operation side of property management and went specifically into learning and development. And uh, that has been such a passion and recently, I'm moving even a little bit slightly to the side of learning and development and getting into process improvement and getting a little bit into the technology side because uh, I'm just a, a nerd, a tech nerd, and it's coming in handy now, you know, some of these ideas. Um, so it, it's great. I'm, I'm lucky to be where I am. Uh, love going to work every day, work with a great group of people and just trying to bring clarity to the work that we do. That's awesome. I love it. And, you know, and, and I have to say, I mentioned earlier that I was lucky enough to be your host on a webinar that you did. And it was it was truly excellent. Um, but I want you guys, if you ever get a chance to make sure you check out Multifamily Insiders, check out Kara's webinar. And if you get an opportunity or take an opportunity to go watch it, it is absolutely wonderful. And there's some great lessons and some things you can truly learn and apply today. So go check it out. But Kara, I was so impressed with your presentation and I know you're a leader in the multifamily industry. So I always love to connect with inspiring leaders and say, hey, take a peek behind the curtain and says, what inspires these incredible leaders? And so I reached out to you and I asked you, I was like, hey, what inspires you? You shared with me three amazing points and I wanna talk about those with you. So the first one you shared is creating a culture of feedback. So tell us what that means and how does that inspire you? You know, feedback is is so important and it's, it's really just communication, right? And we, we know communication is the key to any relationship really, right? Um, but it's lacking. Feedback I think is difficult and Sometimes the feedback is great. Sometimes the feedback is more developmental in nature and those conversations can be difficult. And so, you know, it's, it's easy to avoid them. And, it, and sometimes we think, well, I don't want to give this developmental feedback because I don't want to hurt the person's feelings. But behind that is, you know, I don't want to have this conversation because it's going to make me really uncomfortable. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so I think that, um, and, and there's no organization out there that's got this 100% right, right? It, no one's ever gonna be perfect at this, but uh, it inspires me, the idea of creating psychological safety mm. and creating an environment where people are willing to dig in and have those conversations and see that if someone is coming to you to say, hey, you know what, that was a little bit of a miss, Mm -hmm. maybe this would be better next time that they're not doing it to put you down or to hurt your feelings but they are doing it to help you improve and help you succeed right yeah absolutely and i think that's is i believe that culture and i think what you shared culture is probably the the critical piece of creating that feedback acceptance and i the culture for me is building that relationship and with that relationship comes the trust and with that trust becomes being accepting to that feedback. So is that kind of how you see that build and how you could build that culture of feedback? Yeah. I mean, I, I think trust is always the bedrock of the foundation, right? And trust, it, you know, it's, it, it's tough too, because, you know, there's plenty of like, well, you know, 
they've got to earn my trust or, you know, I'm trying to earn their trust or whatever. And it's all these little, basically, you know, all every, every time you're communicating, every time you are responding or not responding, mm -hmm. those are all the moments where you're building trust. Right. That's and good. so I think that you have to see trust in the everyday and not like, well, oh, I'm going to do this thing in order to build trust with this person. But it's all these little transactions, all these interactions that we have are the foundation. But yeah, if the trust isn't there, it's really easy for things to be misunderstood. Yeah, I, and I agree with you. I think you hit it right on the head where you got to build that trust every day. And it's that interaction you have with your team each and every day. And even if it's not every day, but it's it's creating that those moments that, you know, you're building the relationship. And ultimately, that person that's on the receiving end of the feedback says, you know, hey, you know what? This person, I trust this person because they're constantly communicating with me. And I know they have my best interest at heart. And, and I, I see where that's inspiring. I mean, what a great kind of concept and approach to, to, to have and so inspiring. So here, I love that culture of feedback is fantastic. The second thing, I think this really kind of, kind of leads right into it. You share that leading with empathy is an inspiring point. So tell us how that, what that looks like for you. Yeah. And so I have to give a shout out to Brene Brown, you know, her so much of, of, of her work, but dare to lead specifically, um, the, the book. And I, and I had an opportunity to go through, uh, a dare to lead class, um, with a certified instructor instructor a couple of years ago. And it really changed the way that I looked at leadership in general. And I kind of, I, I think I realized in that moment that I was a lazy leader, <laughs> <laughs> and that I really wasn't trying to work on my leadership because I'm one of those people that was told from a pretty young age that you're a natural leader. And mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, good, I got that down. Like, I, you know, I, I don't need to spend much time. Let me focus on these uh, skill building in other areas. Yeah. Um, but leadership is a skill. <laughs> and so if you're not putting in time and effort at working on it, you're going to miss the mark, right? I mean, I, I think so. So that has been such a, it was so enlightening for me to see, wow, it's so worth making an effort over here. And empathy, I mean, the world just needs more of it, right? We, we make so many assumptions and we, we cut people off and don't allow them to explain. And I think there's a big difference between excuses and explanations. <laughs> Tell me more. I'm, I'm all ears. <laughs> And I, I think it's managers and leaders job to be able to distinguish the difference, mm. right? Yeah. But if so, if there is an explanation for why something didn't happen, we should be willing to hear that because mm -hmm. there's so many different things that are outside of our control. Yeah. And it, it, if someone is showing up in the same way multiple times, now it, it, you know, it's clear that it's an excuse, right? But yeah. I think it's worth asking people Tell me more about that. What what happened there? I would love to know what you were thinking in that moment. Give them the floor before you just judge and come in harsh, right? I mean, yeah, that's and, that's and these brilliant. concepts are simple, mm -hmm. but they're so they're so hard. You don't see them show up a lot, right? Right. I think it makes it. I mean, just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy. And I love it's how. Right. You, and, and and I love how you talk about the difference between excuses and uh, what would you say it was explanations. explanations. So explanations for me, the way what kind of popped in my head was explanations are things out of my control. Excuses are things in my control. Yeah. And 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 I love that you have a heart for saying, hey, you know what? Let's let me listen. Let me figure out where they're coming from. What this means. And dare I say, hey, what are you going to do moving forward to make it better? You know, kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's more of, look, I mean, I think there are a lot of authoritative leaders out there, authoritative mm -hmm. people, right? And I, I would just say, really question whether or not that's really serving you, right? Mm -hmm. Because the people that are doing the work really have the solutions. <laughs> better than anyone else. 
<laughs> and and that's such a you know it's this hard thing and i see so many organizations do it where the decisions are made by you know one or two leader levels up mm -hmm. but but they don't have the direct experience so they are probably making assumptions at what the challenges are that are preventing that work from being done and how much easier is it to just provide a, a space with some psychological safety and let people explain what makes it difficult for this thing to happen. Now there's a real chance for solutions that are equitable. It's an inclusive process, right? I mean, it just yeah. seems like it will, will yield better results. Oh my gosh. And that's so true. And I think when you're leading with empathy, then you're making better decisions because you are connecting with the teams that are directly impacted from your decision. I, and I believe, and I agree with you, empathy is, is such a critical piece of it all, of good leadership is including empathy. So, yeah. so it just good. It makes us better humans at the end of the day, right? Just bottom just line, show empathy at the store, when you're waiting, when you're annoyed that you're in line, whatever, just a little bit of empathy, I think goes a long, long way in this world. I've got to applaud you for that one because that was so true. You're speaking my language. I love that so much. Thank you for, for sharing that. Now, Kara, the third thing that you shared that inspires you is lean management. So this is an interesting concept. So tell me what you mean by lean management. I am I'm all ears on this one. And I and hopefully I don't embarrass myself because I'm <laughs> I'm very new to this. I mean, I've been reading books for a couple of years and um, another shout out, Karen Martin is an author and as uh, a co-founder of a, of a academy, I'm taking classes in lean management right now. Um, and, you know, it's applicable to any industry, which I think is, you know, wonderful about it, but it, the concepts really coincide with having empathy and inclusion. It's really about getting clarity and it's about having everyone involved in the work participate in making the work flow mm -hmm. in the simplest, most logical way possible. And it's about having measurements for whether or not we are being successful in the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think the measurement piece gets lost a lot, right? Um, and, and really defining what a problem is before we start iterating on solutions. Do we really have clarity and know what problem we're trying to solve? Mm -hmm. Because I think we can almost jump the gun and say, like, we think this is a problem. Oh, we could do it this way, this way, this way. So maybe this, whatever we do is successful, but did it really solve the problem? Because we haven't talked about the problem for a while, right? So, and so good. Lean is all these methodologies. There's a lot of different components to it, and, and I'm really just digging into it, but... Oh. It, it's it's inclusive, it's methodical, it's logical, and it's really just about having a plan. And there's so many concepts that even draw from the seven habits of uh, beginning with the end in mind, right? Yeah. Really understanding where we're trying to get. This is where we are now. This is where we want to be. How do we fill this gap mm -hmm. and measure how we are going to know when we are successful in filling this gap? Wow, that's so good. And and Kara, I totally agree with you. I think lean management is such a valuable, you know, approach to doing things because a lot of times we like to overcomplicate things because it's fancy, it's a neat, shiny object. And so, you know, but I love how you talked about, you know, we're solving a problem that we really haven't truly identified the problem well, you know, and we we create this this whole thing to solve this thing that truly, if we just maybe just tweaked it a little bit. It's a quick solve, mm -hmm. but I love how you're you're exploring that and you're identifying through lean management that if you simplify the approach, it makes things a lot easier. Go figure. Yeah, yeah, and that <laughs> measurement, right? Because we're we're emotional beings, right? Mm -hmm. So we can feel like something was successful, and especially, I mean, look, people work hard, right? So if you put in a ton of effort and work really hard on something you're going to probably feel some level of success from that, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you're, you're, you're exhausted. You, you put everything into this thing. So when we have those measurements, I think it, it's really, an, a, you know, it's the scientific, you know, think like a scientist, mm -hmm. throw out the hypothesis. We think that if we yeah. do this, this is going to be the result. 
So it's not as permanent because right now I think we, we try to put these solutions out and we're like, this is the way we're going to do it, you know, for the next five years. And the world changes too fast for that. Yeah. We constantly have to be evolving. But if we if we put it out there as a as an experiment, mm -hmm. it's not a failure that it doesn't work. Like failure is definitely an option on the table. It just means that we have to go back and say, okay, let's relook at our plan. Did we define the problem correctly? Did we choose the right metric to measure it? Did our process make sense? Now we can figure out where we went wrong and make those small tweaks and still get to that final state that we're looking for so much easier, right? Wow. Wow. And I love it. You call it an experiment because it is so true. I mean, yes. you don't know until you try. No, no. And I mean, that's, isn't that what life is? Aren't we constantly <laughs> experimenting and going, I think this is going to work. You know what I mean? But when we, we try to come at this place and say, I have the solution. I don't have any of the solutions. I'm trying to facilitate conversations with people and get ideas from everywhere in the organization and try new things and measure whether or not they were effective. That opens the door, right? Yeah. To so many people being able to be involved. Mm -hmm. And it not being like, oh, you really blew that one. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it did. we learned what didn't work in that case. Right? Let's go back and fix this, yeah. right? And I, and I love that because that just come, brings us back to your initial inspirational point, the culture of feedback. And when people know that they're experimenting and it's okay to fail, you built that relationship, you built the trust, you're leading with empathy. All connected. It's all connected. You wow. Know I mean? And we try to do these things in a vacuum. Yes. But when we allow all of those dotted lines, right, to come together and we are really focused on the, the, the goal, right? And the goal should always include like including people and listening to what the challenges <laughs> are. I mean, I think it's just this, it, it makes so much sense to me, but I get why it's so hard to, to see it. It's, it's, yeah. we're, we're not used to working in, in that, in that way, but I mean, this is the way, I think, you know? Tara, I, you, the way you pulled it all together, so good. Thank you so much. Hey, Kara, we're getting close to the end of our time, and I want to give you, before we wrap up, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. Hmm, closing thought. Yes. You know, I think just to have a little more empathy for yourself, right? And, and don't feel like you need to have all the answers. All of us are imperfect. Every organization is imperfect. And, you know, fear of, of, of waiting to, to, to produce something that's perfect or amazing, just holds you back. Like mm -hmm. share the ideas and don't just wait for the feedback, ask for feedback. You know what, what, how does that change a culture? If you do something, say, how did I show up? You know, what could I have done better in that moment? Don't don't just wait and think that, you know, oh, hopefully somebody's gonna give me feedback. What about asking for it? And, and I just think kindness and empathy should be showing up way more in our lives at work, at home, everywhere. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So good. Experiment. Be yes. be kind, be nice, be open. Guys, y'all gotta rewatch this. Watch it <laughs> once, watch it again. Totally worth it. So many great nuggets. Kara, thank you so much for joining us today on the episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. Guys, make sure you find, follow Kara on LinkedIn. Um, she sometimes has some gold nuggets that she shares. So make sure you, you check her out on LinkedIn and follow, give her a follow because I promise you money back guarantee. She's pretty awesome. Hey, Kara, thank you again for joining us and we will see you on the next episode. We'll see you guys. Thank you.